You've likely seen a video of the turret toss, where the turret separates from the tank in an impressive explosion and then it flies high up in the air. But did you know that that tank was likely the T-72? It's a very interesting one and that's why my first ever longer video is about it. So sit back, relax, let's get into it. During the design and development of the T-72, there was a rivalry between Kharkiv's Morozov design bureau and the Ural Vagon Zavod, the largest main battle tank producer in the world. The Kharkiv team first designed and developed the famous T-64, which is still being used in Ukraine by the way. Maybe you are asking yourself. Why is he mentioning this tank if the video is about the T-72? Well, back in the Soviet Union, the T-64 was very advanced, but it also had problems like the engine, which was unreliable and difficult to repair. Because of this, they started using the so-called mobilization model engine, aka the V-45, in the tank. But this turned out to stress the hull a lot, which is why Ural Vagon Zavod used the stronger hull of the earlier built prototype Object 167. After lots of improvements of this new tank, like an autoloader which I will get into later, and a whole lot of testing, they called it T-72 and accepted it into service in 1973. But after that, in 1973 and 74, the Ural Vagon Zavod factory had a tough time producing the new tank because of the change of production. Only after big investment it was able to produce many T-72s in various versions until 1992. The hull is used for lots and lots of other vehicles like this scary looking BMPT Terminator. I have to admit that on a battlefield this would scare the crap out of me. Not only can it fire these two main auto cannons, but it also has got grenade launchers and guided anti-tank missiles. The T-72 chassis is also used in the TOS-1. This vehicle has 24 unguided missiles with a range of up to 10 kilometers and it comes with a sidekick the TZMT. It has got 2 times 12 spare rockets and 400 additional liters of fuel for a TOS-1. There's like a ton of different versions of the T-72 because it got exported so much. That's why I'll only show you a few of them. By the way, you won't find the original in combat since it's outdated for today's standards. This is the T-72 M4CZ. It's a Czech modernized version of the T-72. Only about 30 of these first wanted 350 and then 140 have ever been produced because of the skyrocketing cost. It features 22 advanced sensor clusters in the turret and added check manufactured protection against heat which are high explosive anti-tank and kinetic rounds in the front. Let's not forget Poland with a PT-91 Twarde which means hard in English. It has even got a new engine and new communication and fire control systems. 92 were even newly built and other 140 were upgraded from T-72As and T-72M1s. Remember that these were only very few of the tons of versions produced. It would be impossible to explain them all here. Of course, this tank wasn't only built for show, so there are also many conflicts where it was used. And I'm gonna go quickly through the most important ones. In the Lebanon war, the tank was used by Syria to flank Israeli forces, but he probably never met the Merkava in combat. The Syrian president called it the best tank in the world, and in the civil war there, it also played a big role. In the Iraq-Iran war, it was also present and the most feared tank according to both sides. Of course, let's not forget the war between Russia and Ukraine. The T-72 is the most numerous tank of Russia. To be specific, it's the T-72B3 version. Before the war, Russia started a massive modernization campaign for the T-72s, but it's struggling to maintain it according to Ukraine. Russia lost about 1,300 of these tanks during the war, and hundreds of various T-72s were also donated to Ukraine, which had only a small number of them before the war. Of course the existing variants have stuff in common since they are all based on the same design. Let's go over them so that you'll be able to recognize the T-72. Most importantly let's start off with the autoloader which is placed right under the turret. Maybe you already know where I'm going. It's the reason for the turret tosses. One hit there and all the shells detonate, practically separating the turret from the rest of the tank. The vehicle is also very small and light compared to western tanks. A fun fact is that some roads and bridges in former Warsaw Pact countries were specifically designed to make it difficult for NATO tanks to pass, but easy for the light T-72s. The gun is 125mm thick and it's called 2A46. The life expectancy is 150 effective full charge shots or EFC, which basically includes the different levels of power and wear of each shot. Or you can express that in 600 heat or armor piercing shells. The armor got improved with each generation, but many versions feature ERA, which means explosive reactive armor, which is highly effective against heat shells. Another fun fact is that after the collapse of the Soviet Union, it turned out that the T-72s with 
with ERA when penetrable to most US and German anti-tank weapons and tank projectiles. Well, overall, the T-72 may not be the best and most modern tank, but it's very solid. That's why there are so many versions and even today, many new tank designs continue to be based on it. Before I click away, please let me know in the comments what I could improve in the future and what you enjoyed in particular. That's gonna help a lot for future videos. You might want to subscribe as well so you won't miss improved videos in the future. Special thanks to Hotus Gaming for helping me with this video. See you in the next one.